This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoToAssist. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. And we're at the Consumer Electronics Show. <sighs> we're still alive too. Yes, we're still alive and it's almost the last day. It's close to it. And we survived. We survived CES. So we would invite you to join us as we talk about some of the technologies that allow us to survive CES. As well as, and later in the show, some really interesting stuff with our friends from Qualcomm Atheros. You guys know how much we yeah, love Atheros. Uh, talking about some of the new innovations in IEEE 802.11 AD. Wait, AD. That's not AC, that's AD. No. Oh, so it's better. It's different. It's 60 ah. gigahertz instead of, you know, 2.4, 5.8 kind of stuff. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah, it's the new cool. fun unlicensed spectrum. Basically, goes faster, but not as far, and really cool stuff. So we're okay. going to talk about beamforming, because, dude. Uh, Why I, not? Yeah. So with all that, I guess we'll just see you on the other side. No, just a second ago, I was saying, like, this is so cool that, you know, the low latency of it, the 60 gigahertz. And to pick me to yeah, yeah, go, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, let's... Uh, Oh, there we go. Let me just get back into the, the track. So basically now we are playing and using the accelerometer from the tablet. And so what's on the tablet and what's on the display is, I mean, I can't see any lag. Uh, what, what's the lag like? So right now the lag is about a couple of milliseconds, right? So it can probably be around 10 milliseconds. That's probably the, the lag that we are seeing now. The thing that was, you know, blowing my mind is how just fast it is, right? And how small this, uh, this antenna is over here. At first, when you were talking about all the different beamforming technology you can do, and, and this was up here. I was like, oh, okay, so you've got like 30 of these in the end, in the back of the display, right? It's just this. Yeah, it's just this. So if you look, if you look here, these small squares, these are the antennas. So here we have an array of 32 elements. So there are 32 elements in this small board. So this is all what we need. When you said when the frequency goes up, the, the antennas get smaller, you were not joking. No, no, actually, no. <laughs> so the other thing I was saying is... Yeah, yeah, physics is good. Uh, the other thing is, you know, I'm saying, like, this is fantastic. Now I want, like, everything in my home to have this in it. But then at a certain point, it's just going to become, like, 2.4 gigahertz again. It's going to be a huge cluster. Right. Now, now, the good thing is that when we are using beamforming, vertically, we are narrowing the beam. So the beam, in this case, with 32 antennas, is about 10 degrees. So basically, if I'm talking to you, I will, the transmission will be 10 degrees, and then the noise on the other... 350 degrees will be very, very low. It'll just totally fall off. If I, if I hook that into a, um, into a spectrum analyzer, I, I would only see where I'm actually pointing my beam. Like, it'd be like having a parabolic antenna. Right, exactly. Except it's, a para it's 30 parabolic antennas this size. And we are changing the beam. We are changing the direction of the beam by steering the beam. So each of these little, uh, uh, each of these uh, part of the array are actually slightly curved to look at a different section no, they are all, actually, in this board we have antennas that are looking to the front, antennas that are looking to the back, and antennas that are what we call end fires that are looking towards the edge. They're like inside the PCB or what? It's between the layers of the PCB, exactly. That is so cool. Do you, I mean, how many do you think you really need to be able to kind of like beamform your living room so that nothing's really interfering that much? So we will use all the, all the 32, and basically there are some modes that in order to reduce the power consumption, we'll just reduce the number of antennas that we are using. But we can use all the 32. And that is just amazing how small that is and how much power you can get through it. Yeah, and, and the good thing is that you might have, today if you take Wi-Fi for example, and you have two access points and two clients, one connected, one client to each access point, and they are close enough, basically you will divide the throughput between the two networks. I mean, essentially, yeah. Right, if they are in the same channel. Now, here, because of the special separation, you can have multiple setups running at the same channel, at the same time, and each one of them running at full speed. You don't need to share the media anymore. 
It's not like, uh, say, for example, 802.11b, where you've got you know channels one through 14-ish, well, 14 in Japan, and there's essentially only three channels that don't overlap. In this case, you're saying it doesn't matter. Don't think about channels. Don't think about overlapping. Just think about forming the beam so that you're not interfering with your neighbor over here. Right. We, we still have three channels also in 60 gig, non-overlapping channels. But even if we had only one, we can reuse the media. Today, the wireless media we are used that the wireless media is a shared medium. So if one talks, all the rest has to shut up. Now, this is not right for 60. We can all talk at the same time as long as I talk to you and he talks with someone else and we don't interfere each other, right? So this is the cool thing. Now we can have dense deployments that everybody, you don't need, I don't, I don't want to share my throughput with all the rest, especially here at CES, right, with all the rest of the people. This makes so much sense for the like the urban development. I mean, this is where you know 2.4 gigahertz, even 5.8, really sucks. Is you know you go to like apartment buildings in New York City, and it's like yeah, try to get a good signal. Even if you broke out a spectrum analyzer, all you'd see is that the noise floor has been risen on every single channel. Yeah, and you can look at as an analogy. For example, when the wired Ethernet moved from fast Ethernet to gigabit Ethernet. It was from a shared media, not only speed. Oh, yeah, because it was like like on a hub. Exactly, from a shared media to a switched media. This is exactly the same. You might have an access point that has links to the clients at full speed, and then the backbone of the access point will be the one that will carry everything. So if 802.11 AD, though, with the beam forming and the 60 gigahertz, and of course the, the, the range, you know, just the physics of it, uh, if if the underlying like you know media access control stuff doesn't really change then i'm assuming that all of the fun wi-fi hacking stuff that's capable with your existing you know um, uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz stuff really applies here except the difference would be now i'd need to not physical access but i'd need to be damn close i'd be need to be like between the beam to actually do like a man in the middle to actually do like when you okay so in the lab when you guys are actually setting up your sniffers to like test stuff you literally have to like make sure it's in between the two pieces of the test gear? Well, uh, not necessarily because there are modes that are kind of omni modes, right? Or we have patterns that we, on purpose, we want to hear, or for example, beacons are, we need to uh, avoid hidden nodes. So beacons are either sent in different directions or sent in omnidirectional modes, right? So there are things that can be done in order to hear what's going on. But remember that the chipset will all the time be looking for the best path between the transmitter and the receiver. So the path is moving. Trying to hack that will be a challenge. It will. It will be a challenge. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Every year we make the same resolution to spend more time with our friends and family, less time at the office, but that can be so challenging when you work in IT. And that's why I recommend GoToAssist by Citrix. It gives you three essential tools in one easy to use cloud-based tool set. You've got GoToAssist remote support, which lets you do live or unattended support to any Mac or PC. You've even got mobile device additions for the iPad and Android devices, so you can stay productive from anywhere and best of all, you can track all of it with the GoToAssist service desk. I know when I worked in IT, having GoToAssist and having a wireless connection meant that I could actually have a social life. I know, believe it or not. Sign up for your special 30-day free trial today. Visit GoToAssist.com, click on the Try It Free button, and use the promo code HAK5. That's GoToAssist.com, promo code HAK5.